My name is Milton. I live in Montreal. And it's June 19th. I thought I would celebrate it by contributing. Not a lot of people know about black history in Canada. I am not a historian. I grew up in Ottawa. When I was in my 20s, there was a bar that I couldn't go into across the river in Hull. The rule was that they needed five pieces of picture ID. No one has five pieces of picture ID. This was a rule created to prevent black people from entering. That was a long time ago and things have changed, but these kinds of incidents do happen. This is when I discovered Canadian black history, that we have deep roots in Canada. Black people in Canada come from three broad groups. We have a large number of people who come from the Caribbean, people who come from Africa, and about 20% can trace their roots to an earlier and longer history of Canada. They are the descendants of slaves who came through the Underground Railroad or by other means to make Canada their home. I live in Montreal. I live near Little Burgundy. It's a area of the city that historically had a black community. Little Burgundy has gone through changes ever since it started as a working class neighborhood in the 1800s. When the first wave of Irish and other peoples from around the world were coming to work in Montreal, about 10% of Montreal is of African heritage. Little Burgundy is somewhat the shadow it once was. The Immigration Act of 1976 changed many things. I am an African who came in the 1970s. This was the beginning of multiculturalism in Canada. But the story that I heard was that an Ontario court case, a working man of Caribbean descent wanted to bring his family here to Canada. Because of his court challenge, the laws began to change to accept people from all over the world. We need to step back just a little bit to talk about the history of black people coming from Africa, coming to South America and North America. There was conflicts all along the coastal regions, decimating and destroying infrastructures that were already established for hundreds of years. It's hard to imagine the hundreds of people that were packed into ships by Portuguese, British, Spanish, French, Dutch, and Danish slavers. Some 12 to almost 13 million were shipped across the Atlantic into slavery. There are horrific stories. Historian Charmaine Nelson points out female slaves were sexualized. There are stories of women and men being used to breed. I don't have many heroes, but black history does provide them. Maria Joseph Angelique was a slave in Montreal who was brought by her owners from Haiti. It was a sign of wealth to have slaves. She wanted to run away, and part of her act of running away was to create a distraction by burning these buildings down. She burnt 45 buildings. There are other heroes, other men and women who worked hard to end slavery. John Brown was the Rambo of men who fought for abolition. The story goes that he had something like seven bullets in him and he just kept on fighting. Just kept on fighting to end slavery. And he just saw it as, a, as an extreme wrong. Religious leader Levy Coffin and his wife Catherine saved something like 2,000 slaves by bringing them to Canada. Harriet Tubman is also a very strong advocate and brought people to Canada. There are stories of free men living in Canada who fought alongside soldiers. Canada is even known for accepting the three Jamaican Maroons were warrior people who fought for their freedom in Jamaica and they made Canada their home once given asylum or home. There are many people who will not be remembered and have been forgotten but have played just as an important role. We can remember that there was an earlier history in which Canada did not want non-white people. Australia already had a non-white policy in the early 1900s. Black people were outsiders even though many of us and them have been here for decades and centuries. We have to remember people in our history like Viola Desmond. I can barely imagine the courage it must have taken her to be arrested for just watching a movie. There are moments in our history that bring pride and bring sadness. In both cases, in Montreal, we have a story. 1969, 200 strong students protested and became a significant historical landmark in Canadian history for civil rights, people banding together. Montreal has changed over the years and become a better and a different place. 
for so many people. But we have to remember the poor, whether they are black or any other community, are still vulnerable to many things. Montreal's poorest neighborhoods, often the most racially diverse neighborhoods, are the hardest hit the COVID-19 crisis. At the same time, hate is still a part of our society. There's a study that found that when given a choice, children preferred the white doll because it was seen as more favorable. We're changing as a society now. Where movies like the Black Panther and other movies are giving us the opportunity to express ourselves more fully. Growing up as a child, I remembered that we only had one hairstyle. Now I see that the richness of blackness, whatever that is, in hairstyle and clothing is given room that it wasn't given room before in the same way. It's not pride, it's comfort with who you are. It's comfort from a society that gives us that space. It's a place where we can give back. The African Canadian and the African American experience is transforming and changing. What was once an African is now an American or a Canadian with a richness of traditions and heritages that are only now beginning to be discovered. The old stories of how we got our handshake or greetings. Legends and stories, myths, philosophies, ideas. Maybe this is a time not so much to reclaim our past, but to create a new future. One of the best books that I ever found talking about this subject of black history comes from Lawrence Hill. The Book of Negroes describes the story of how blacks were in Manchester and how they came to be in Nova Scotia. Little Burgundy is a community that is slowly disappearing in its cultural significance. Over time, photos have disappeared, repairs were needed but not done, people moved, funding changed. In 2017, Concordia University students went about to collect the historical documents so people could keep track of our history. Now I know it sounds like history of black Canadians is dark or difficult, but I also want you to recognize there is a hope. One of the hopes that I have is from a man named Lanier Phillips. In World War II, his ship landed off the coast of Newfoundland. He was a black sailors were cooks. They weren't treated the same as other men on the ship. They were also restricted from actually leaving the ship. So when a ship would travel the world and dock, the black soldiers would have to stay on the ship. So the story of Lanier, the ship had sunk just off of the coast of Newfoundland. And he found himself in a hospital bed, recovering, with nurses surrounding him, white nurses, women, doctors, men, whoever. He came from a part of the United States that segregated. And he just could not possibly believe that white people could be this kind and not care about the color of his skin. Because of him... He died in 2012. Newfoundland had celebrated his return almost every year since 1942. He was their hero and they were his hero. He reminded Canadians and he reminded the world that we're just human beings. I want that. And I guess the only way to end it is to, is to imagine Canadians in hockey. We have Canadians who play hockey. Black Canadians who play hockey. <laughs> Nothing more Canadian than that.